Since Elon Musk mocked Ukraine's wartime leader Volodymyr Zelensky in a post on Twitter on October 2, 2023, Kremlin propagandists called him our agent. Obviously, this upset many people and they labeled the SpaceX CEO a Nazi. However, wise people always believe that Russians are expert gaslighters and only praise Elon to erode trust. This speculation makes sense because for a long time, the Moscow government always considered Elon Musk and his rocket company SpaceX a thorn in the side. Not only from the fact that his Starlink was used by the Ukrainian army to attack Russian tanks in the Battle of 2022, most of all, the birth of SpaceX has almost put an end to Russia's once formidable rocket business empire. What a huge humiliation when an entire country is defeated by a private rocket company. How did SpaceX broomsticks destroy Russia's best rocket in 2023? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. It can be said that from the moment the top designer of the Russian National Space Agency spat on Elon Musk's shoe during the 2001 negotiation, the Russian aerospace industry could not have conceived that its end was near arrival. Just one year later, Elon Musk founded Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, commonly referred to as SpaceX, with the goal of reducing space transportation costs and colonizing Mars. In May 2020, atop SpaceX's Falcon 9, Crew Dragon spacecraft carried NASA astronauts Douglas Hurley and Robert Behenkin to the International Space Station in the first crewed orbital spaceflight launched from the United States since the final space shuttle mission in 2011. This milestone ended NASA's dependence on Russia's Soyuz, and as of 2023, SpaceX's Crew Dragon is the only United States human-rated orbital transport spacecraft to transport crews to and from the ISS under NASA's commercial crew program. Not only Dragon, but Falcon 9 is also very well known by several records. This year alone marked the 90 the launch of this workhorse rocket, far surpassing all other rockets. SpaceX reused more than 90% of the rockets it launched in 2023 and also launched 1 million kilograms of cargo into orbit. Now let's see what Elon Musk's insulter built. The Soyuz rocket is considered the Russian workhorse, one of the most often used rockets and one of the world's most reliable space vehicles alike. Since its original incarnation took flight in 1966, the Soyuz family of rockets has racked up almost 2,000 missions. However, all belong to the past since currently, the Russians' pride has gradually been left in the dust. Although 2023 is coming to an end, Russia just launched 18 flights overall this year with 16 flights using the Soyuz rocket. Notably, most of the payloads launched by Russian rockets were developed domestically to give a sense of what's happening with their space program. What a shame. But please tell me what's exactly going on. Everything starts from the sensitive, political aspect. Okay, in this video I will not discuss the rights and wrongs of the 2022 invasion of Ukraine. It would be better if I talked about the impact of this war on Russia's space sectors. By destroying collaborations with Europe, Russia has transformed itself into the world's first former space power. The Soviet Union lived its glorious years in the early years of the space race when it often came out on top. As it raced to beat the United States, it launched the first satellite and the first astronaut and made considerable advancements in rocketry. After the Soviet Union fell in 1991, Roscosmos also inherited rocket technology. By the early 1990s, updated versions of Soyuz, a Soviet rocket first launched in 1966, and Proton, a Soviet rocket launched in 1965, were still reliable and in use. The European Space Agency was concerned at the time that it could not maintain access to space by relying on its own rockets or American ones. In 1996, an arrangement was forged so that France-based Ariana Spaces A, the world's first private launch company, could market and operate Soyuz rockets. Roscosmos and the Europeans agreed a few years later to build launch facilities for the Soyuz at the French-operated European spaceport in French Guiana. It was a winning deal. Europe gained access to launch services and Russia received an important financial lifeline. As recently as 2013, Russia controlled around half of the global commercial launch industry. But competition loomed. 
SpaceX was born in 2002. By 2020, SpaceX represented half of the commercial satellite launch market, and Russia was down to 10%. That was a problem. Over the years, as Russia's economy struggled, Roscosmos had leaned on commercial activities for funding. As businesses moved elsewhere, that funding suffered. Between 2014 and 2020, Roscosmos' budget fell from $5 billion to $1.4 billion, while NASA's 2021 budget was $23.3 billion. A few years ago, President Vladimir Putin declared that Russia needed to master new rocket technologies to compete for commercial space launches against SpaceX and then proceeded to cut funding for Russia's spaceflight activities even more. Roscosmos could still count on the ISS and its commercial collaborations with Europe for financing. The most important European example was a record $1 billion contract signed by OneWeb, a British satellite broadband provider, for 21 launches via Ariane Space. Then Russia invaded Ukraine, drawing sanctions from the European Union and the United Kingdom. Roscosmos responded by suspending rocket operations and recalling Russian staff from the French Guiana spaceport. That left four European satellites and one space telescope in search of new launch vehicles. A few days later, Roscosmos informed OneWeb that it would not launch its satellites unless it received guarantees that the satellites would not be used for military purposes and the United Kingdom government would divest from OneWeb ownership. OneWeb responded by hiring SpaceX to take Russia's place. The European Space Agency informed Russia that it would no longer collaborate on a joint Mars mission, which it can afford to pursue alone. Roscosmos cannot. Amid sanctions and Russia's belligerence toward its European partners, who would hire it? That leaves a once-proud space program with no apparent way to remain relevant as a space power. Another reason I cannot help but say is that Russian technology is so backward that it is easily surpassed by many new modern technologies, especially in the context of the rocket industry moving towards commercialization. What's most notable is the Soyuz is an expendable rocket. The four engines fall back to Earth when their fuel is spent, and the main core is not reusable either. It's an awfully expensive business. Newer rockets, like the Falcon family rocket, are partly reusable, meaning its first stage engine lands itself back on Earth. Even SpaceX has pushed its heritage further with the fully reusable Starship rocket. The Russian space agency, Roscosmos, isn't known for being transparent about its costs but it charges America and Europe's space agencies, NASA and ESA just north of $80 million or 70.7 million euros per seat or per astronaut, according to 2018 estimates. So it's got to cost a lot to fly a Soyuz. By comparison, the Falcon 9 costs $62 million per launch and its larger sibling rocket, the Falcon Heavy, costs $90 million tops. One more reason to say goodbye to the Russian old generation rocket is about thrust. For example, Soyuz 2's first thrust is 3,357 kilonewtons, half that of the Falcon 9 with 7,607 kilonewtons. Obviously, lower thrust will result in lower payload capacity. The Soyuz 2 can carry a maximum payload of 8,600 kilograms or 18.96 pounds to low Earth orbit for communications satellites and the ISS. This number is 22,800 kilograms or 50.265 pounds for SpaceX's workhorse rocket. Another aspect that is worth noting is about spacecraft. Perhaps I won't need to describe much about the Soyuz spacecraft because you know very well about its crampedness. You know, Soyuz is so small. The habitable space in the descent module is just four cubic meters. From a crew comfort viewpoint, the Soyuz is cramped, I might even say cramped squared. Once strapped in, astronaut heels are nearly in contact with the butt. They are tied down at eight points to a form-fitting couch, making it difficult to move anything other than their arms. They can only swivel their heads and wiggle their toes. Meanwhile, a dragon is a more elongated, candy, white, cone-shaped capsule that stands 8.1 meters tall with a diameter just greater than 4 meters with 11 cubic meters of internal volume. Importantly, Dragon can be a business class of spaceship, safe and comfortable. Its astronaut-specific amenities include four big windows, advanced avionics, computer systems, and touchscreen displays, including controls for interior temperature, which can be set between 18 to 27 degrees Celsius, and of course, seats.
And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.